did you bring your material for impartation all right let us quickly go into scripture and then we shall proceed while the message is on the healings will be taking place deliverances will be taking place chains will be breaking and we shall have your testimony looking quickly this morning on the subject the profitability of faith the profitability of faith Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 it, once again I am going to be as sharp and um, fast as possible but please until the grace is shared it is a distraction for anybody to walk out while we are still rounding out the service the Lord bless you as you comply in Jesus name But without faith, it is impossible to please him. That is God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him the profitability of faith this morning we have two objectives first it is understanding the profit of faith and second it is understanding access to faith the profit of faith and access to faith I want to say by way of introduction that faith is doorway to spiritual rewards and profit spiritual reward is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him or them that diligently believe him spiritual reward beloved please know that we do not believe God in vain. We don't seek God in vain. Isaiah chapter 45 and in verse 19. I said not, I have not spoken in secret. In a dark place of the earth, I said not unto the seed of Jacob, seek ye me in vain. He said, I'm not asking you to look for me in vain. We do not seek God in vain. We do not believe God in vain. We are not wasting our time in church. I'd like you to note this down. Faith attracts substantial evidence of the reality of God into the life of the believer say that again faith is that weapon that attracts substantial evidence of the reality of God into the life of the believer the Bible said in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 to 3 faith is a substance of things so far the evidence of things not sin we can stop there Faith is substance, it is evidence. It attracts substantial evidence of the reality of God into the life of the believer. In case there is anybody who says God does not exist, when he sees the life of a man of faith, a woman of faith, they will see the evidence of the reality of God. Listen to this. Secondly, you cannot be in faith and be without proofs you cannot be in faith and be without proofs you cannot be in faith and be without proofs you cannot be in faith and be without evidence you can't and thirdly faith is what makes the word of God profitable Hebrews chapter 4 verse 2 say for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them but the word preached 
did not profit them not being mixed with faith. The word profits when it is mixed with faith. Faith makes the word profitable. It is possible to have religion without reality. But you cannot have faith without reality. I mean, there are religious people that people are mocking all the time. Ah, church, church, church. He goes to church all the time. In their family, they are looking at them and they are mocking them. But you cannot be in faith and be without reality. I prophesy to somebody here today your Christianity shall not be a liability your Christianity shall not be a reproach to your generation I decree somebody is stepping into the realm of evidence if you are the one shout the loudest amen say after me say I, I am stepping into the realm of substantial and evidential Christianity by the power of faith say substantial and evidential Christianity through faith no one say amen it is real it's real where we are sitting here today is faith a time of very very deep recession could have been worse than it was while the construction was going on. Naira crash, dollar went up. Cost of construction multiplied at least twice or thrice. And yet it was moving without stress. By the weapon of faith. What? How profitable is faith? What is the profitability of faith? We are looking at five things that faith will produce. Number one, faith is key to power. Faith is key to power. Acts chapter 6 verse 8, it talks about Stephen. He was full of faith and power. And did great wonders and miracles among the people. The presence of faith is the presence of power. The fullness of faith is the fullness of power. Faith cannot be present and power is absent. That is why men of faith are men of power. Anywhere you see a woman of faith, she's also a woman of supernatural power. Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 11. It says, Wherefore also we pray always for you that our God will count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. The work of faith is accompanied by power. Second Peter chapter 1 and in verse 3. Oh sorry, first Peter chapter 1, verse 5. He so said, We are kept by the power of God through faith. By the power of God through faith. Those who walk in faith never beg for power. They don't beg for power. You cannot be a man of faith or a woman of faith and be a powerless entity. And power according to physics is the capacity to do work. So things work where faith is at work. And work is said to be done when an object is moved through a distance in the direction of the force. So faith people are movers, they are shakers, they move things because of the availability of power. Am I communicating at all? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Every time you see something around you not working as it should, there is a power that is lacking. 
And so faith is key to power. Number two, faith, of course, you remember the story of the woman with the issue of blood, where she touched the helm of Jesus' garment and power entered into her body. Mark chapter 5, verse 28 to verse 30. Faith is the switch of power. Someone say amen. Number two, faith is key to glory. Glory. John chapter 11 verse 40. If you will believe, if thou wouldest believe, Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. In other words, if you would have faith, you will see glory. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 8. You say whom we have not yet seen. Of 1 Peter 1 8. Whom have you not seen, you love. And in whom, though now, you see him not, yet believing, you rejoice. With joy unspeakable and full of glory. You believe, so there is glory. Listen, the faith realm is the glory realm. Everyone occupying the realm of faith occupies the realm of glory. Is the glory realm. Beloved, I'd like you to understand that faith moves people to the realm of God. It moves you to the realm of God. The realm God is occupying. That was, that's the realm of possibilities. In Mark chapter 10 verse 27, you will see the connection. Mark 10 27, he said, and Jesus looking upon them said, with men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. With God, how many things are possible? With God, how many things are possible? Alright, look at Mark chapter 9 verse 23. There is something else that makes all things possible. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, that is, if you have faith, all things are possible. To him that believeth. With God, all things are possible. With faith, all things are possible. What does that say to you? Hello? Mark 9.23 Mark 10 27 with God all things are possible with faith all things are possible what does that mean to you any any mathematician here a equals b b equals c with God all things are possible with faith all things are possible what happens the meaning of that faith moves you to the realm where God operates Faith moves God and God moves things. Wow. So, the faith realm is the glory realm. And the God realm is the glory realm. Faith moves you to the realm of glory. Someone say it loud, amen. Say it louder, amen. What is the meaning of that? Life becomes glorious when faith is alive. Life becomes glorious when faith is alive. Events of your life will happen at the speed of the glory. At the speed of the glory. At the speed of the glory. When you are in faith. At the speed of the glory. Someone say amen. So faith is key to power. Faith is key to glory. Number three, faith is key to the blessing. Galatians chapter 3 verse 9 said, So then, they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. They which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham faith people are blessed people Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 and 14 Galatians 3 13 and 14 said Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law be made a curse for us for it is written cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree that the blessing might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ that we might receive the, that promise of the blessing 
through faith. So faith connects a person to the blessing. Am I communicating at all? In Psalm 27 verse 13. He said, I had fainted. Except I had believed. To see the goodness of the Lord. I believed to see the goodness of the Lord. In the land of the living. To believe is to see his goodness. To believe or to be in faith is to see the goodness of the Lord. Faith is a doorway to the world of the blessing. It's a doorway. The blessing of God. Listen. There are people they call word of faith people. Some people hate them very well. They say all they talk about is faith, faith, faith. They are word of faith people. And I can tell you some of those people are some of the most integrity of people you ever saw. They stick to one wife for life. Kenneth Hagen. Or a robot who built a 110 floor on one ground. 30 story building and then I think another 60 or so climbing. Or a robot. Look at that. Or a robot University of Tulsa, Oklahoma. I stood on that ground and looked. Is this what God did with one man who is not government? Then Kennedy Hagen was distributing 325,000 magazines monthly for years, free of charge. 325,000 printed with money. Then Kenneth Copeland, he has been married to his wife now for almost 60 years. Has given out 27 aeroplanes as gift to other people. Eh? No bicycle. Then Bishop David Edible. They call them men, people of faith, word of faith, word of faith. Yet they swim in the blessing without stealing and cheating. By association and connection, we are among. It will not be humility to say we are not. It will be stupidity. God is paying me salary. From the scratch of this church, I didn't agree to receive a salary. What God pays me as salary monthly, if I ask the church to pay it, it will cause problem. The, and the bulk of it, let me say, 95% of it goes back to the work. And God says, is that how you operate? Take You to take more. Two days ago, I told my wife, I said, I want us to identify major projects to, to carry out from our personal resources monthly on this ground. Just identify, let's go. Minus church. Not for us, built for the church. Am I communicating? The faith realm is the blessing realm. That is to say, faith moves you to an enviable status. The realm of faith is the fortunate realm. The realm of fortune. Where people will look at you and say, that man is fortunate. The faith realm is the realm of escape from the causes of life. The causes. The causes of life. That faith realm. That is where somebody is stepping into this morning. If you are that one, say louder, amen. If you are that one, say louder, amen. Get up your right and say, Father, through faith, I connect to power. Through faith, I connect to glory. Through faith, I connect the blessing. Number four, faith is key to wholeness. 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 That's right. 
Matthew chapter 9 verse 22 Jesus speaking to the woman said daughter be of good comfort thy faith has made thee whole and the woman was made whole from that hour in Matthew 15 28 he was also speaking to the Greek Syrophoenician woman and Jesus answered and said unto her O woman great is thy faith be it unto you even as thou wilt and her daughter was made whole from that hour faith again making somebody whole blind Bartimaeus Mark chapter 10 verse 52 and Jesus again said unto him go your way thy faith has made thee whole and immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way faith made him whole then the leper that returned back to say thank you Luke chapter 17 verse 19 again we saw faith making and Jesus and he said unto him arise go thy way thy faith has made thee whole what is the meaning faith makes whole to make whole means to repair and to restore faith repairs faith restores lives and destinies faith replaces in your life whatever is stolen or missing or lacking maybe in your in your life in your family in your destiny something is missing something was stolen something is lacking faith brings it back faith is the cure for the deficiencies and the insufficiencies of life any area of life where you appear deficient or insufficient it is faith that feels that fucking both divine healing and divine health are functions of faith divine healing is being restored to health and divine health is remaining in health both of them are functions of faith I speak to someone here today whatever is missing in your life today they are restored they are replaced. They are replenished. Shout the loudest, amen. Shout the loudmost, amen. Shout amen at the top of your voice. Very, very important. You shall not be servicing sickness the remaining days of your life. You shall not battle with weakness the remaining days of your life say a loud amen finally faith is key to victory and triumph faith is key to victory and triumph first john chapter 5 verse 4 say for whatsoever is born of god overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. Even our faith. Overcometh the world. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32 to 34. Hebrews 11, he says, And what shall I more say? For the time will fail me to tell you of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah, of David also and Samuel and of the prophets. What happened to them? Who through faith subdued kingdoms. They wrought righteousness. They obtained promises. They stopped the mouths of lions. They quenched the violence of the fire. Escaped the edge of the sword. Out of weakness we are made strong. They went valiant in fight. And turned to flight. Turned the enemy about turn. The armies of the aliens through faith. I see somebody today. The last battle that defeated you shall be the last forever. Shout the loudest, amen. Shout the loudest, amen. Say it louder. Say, I am winning. 
win the battles of my life listen to this oh, yeah, 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 yeah. faith is the guarantee of victory any day any time anywhere in the physical realm in the spiritual realm any realm they meet you faith is the guarantee of victory any day any time anywhere faith will make a victor out of a victim a captain out of the captive a conqueror out of the conquered faith will make a victim a victor out of the victim a captain out of the captive a conqueror out of the conquered by faith you subdue kingdoms humiliate dangers escape calamity Turn around battles and put the enemy on the run. Did you hear what I just said? I said by faith you will subdue kingdoms, humiliate dangers, escape calamities, turn around battles and put the enemy on the run. who has been a victim here all this while you are rising today as a victor i don't know who was a conquered person here before you are rising out of here as the conqueror i don't know who was a captive here before you are stepping out of here as a captain shout the loudest amen take your seat I like this preaching. This is a kind of war that makes you to return back to the devil that looked for your trouble and tell them I have come now. The last time I was fighting you with dang gun, but now I have a general purpose machine gun. Hey! Hey! Lift your hands and say in the name of Jesus. I will not lose another battle another day of my life in Jesus name every battle for your future battle for your children battle for your health battle for your finances battle over your career I announce today by the weapon and the mystery of faith the battle is over forever the battle is in your favor shout the loudest amen take your seat the presence of the Lord So, you need power, please don't lack faith. Want to walk in the glory realm, don't lack faith. You want the blessing and not be buried in curses and poverty and scarcity and shortage? Don't lack faith. You want to be well and strong. Because it is possible to be well and not strong. There are people who are not sick, but they are not strong. There is, you can't say this is the sickness, yet. Like jellyfish. You need faith. And you want to be equal to every devil. Devil from the water. Devil from the wilderness. Devil from your father's house. You want to be equal to every emergency. You want to show the bastard the road back to hell. You must walk in faith. What is the key of faith? 
This month is your month. And we are dealing with just this key. The principal key that opens the door to the world of faith is light from scripture. Light from scripture. That is the word of God. Romans chapter 10 verse 8. But what said it? The word is near you. Even in your mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith. Which we preach. The word of God is the word of faith. Romans 10 17. It says so then faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. In Acts chapter 6 verse 7. The word of God increased. And a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. So anywhere the, the word explodes, faith explodes. First Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 8. We saw from, from, for from you sounded out the word of the Lord. Not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to, to God's word is spread. Because the word of God sounded, the faith also spread. So there is an inextricable relationship, inextricable relationship between faith, hand in glove relationship between faith and the world. And of course, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. Through faith, we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God. Hebrews 11, 3. Through faith, we understand that the walls were framed by the world. So, the world is the raw material for faith. Light from the world. Light. The, the preaching I preached last week, Wednesday, if you are not here, please, I'd like you to pick it up. It's going to help you. But I'm going to go very, very quickly now and ask and find out what do we do with light or faith to walk it is established that lighted people are faith filled people what dead people faith filled people what do we do number one access the light from scripture. Access it. That is through the study of the word. Through meditation. Through listening to the tapes. Access the light. From scripture. Somebody say amen. Let me show you. An example of light. One woman came to Jesus and Jesus said she was looking for the healing of her child. I think Matthew 15, 26. It's not meat to give the children's bread to dogs. So healing is bread for the children. Am I communicating? The man, the, the woman was looking for healing. And Jesus said, it is not good to give the children's bread to dogs. So it is established as a fact that healing is children's bread. The children of God. Then, in Matthew 12, 6 verse 11, he said, when you pray, ask me to give you daily bread. So, you are entitled to health daily. Then, in 1 Timothy chapter 5, I believe verse 8, he said, if anyone will not take care of his own, Anybody will not provide for his own. And especially for those of his own house. He has denied the faith. 
and is worse than an infidel. That every good father gives food to his children. And anyone who doesn't feed his children is worse than an unbeliever. The God who is telling man to feed his family cannot deprive his own family. He cannot deprive his own family. He is not an infidel. So he must give his children food daily. Now he gave us an example in the Old Testament where he gave the children of Israel manna daily. Manna daily. Manna daily. So there was no feeble person among their tribes. For 40 years. He brought them forth with silver and gold and there was not one feeble person. Was that Psalm 105 verse 37? And there was not one feeble person among their tribes because he fed them with bread daily. Father, I apply for today's bread. And since you don't deprive your own of bread, pain, what are you doing here? I just gave you an example of light. Light. Light is a product of revelational equations. You are seeing dream of death, 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 death. Then you went to the book of Hebrews chapter 2 verse 9. And it told you that Jesus, who was made a little lower than angels for the sake of suffering death, was crowned with glory and honor that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. Meaning that the death that should die me before time he died it he tasted my death he died at the age of 33 and a half years that is not that is not longevity that is premature death if the devil killed him before time no devil is devilish enough to take your life before time for your purpose he died he died he died he died before time he died young so you can live long he died young so you can live it doesn't matter the arrow it doesn't matter the dream the just shall not live by his dreams the just shall live by his faith Ay, 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 ay. Stand on your feet with a loud shout of praise. A loud shout of praise. And help me shake the hands of three people around you and tell them, Congratulations, congratulations. You shall fulfill your days. receiving something one thing about the word of God is when fresh light comes upon you he knocks off darkness he sent forth his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction so access, access light from scripture number two of course Psalm 119 verse 130 he said the entrance of his word give it light access light from scripture number two attune attune your thoughts to the light of scripture attune your thought use the light to tune your thought use the light to renovate mentality wash your mind renew your mind with light from scripture Romans 12 1 to 2 I beseech you brethren by the mercy of the living God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice Holy acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So, you use, you see, ah, there are many things to say. How many of you know that the mind is a major challenge of life? 
that is why he said in second corinthians chapter 10 verse 3 for though we walk in the flesh we do not walk after the flesh for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of struggles, casting down imaginations. Imagination, say, oh, look at your family. How many people live to be 40 years? How many people cross 50? Look at your, your the marriages. How many marriages succeeded there? Look at this and that. And all those things are in your mind. He said, you cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. No, he said, just watch and see what happened to your mother, happened to your father, it happened to everybody, what about you? He said, devil, you two watch and see. I will be the first to escape. I will be the first to escape. I will go. Listen to this. Don't ever forget, sit down, for as long as you are alive. It is unto, unto you, according to your faith. It is equally unto you, according to your thought. As he thinketh in his heart. Proverbs 23 says, according to your thought. Things don't happen to people by accident, most times. According to your thought. Ephesians 3 and in verse 20 unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think so God does not only answer your asking he answers your thinking think well you can't think up and stay down you can't think forward and hang backward you can't think authority and end in captivity. Use the word, that light, to attune your mind. We are the generation of people that humiliate the devil. Someone say amen. Somebody say a louder amen. One day I wanted to assist a young man and this young man has been stranded for years. I wanted to assist him with some money to start him up in business. And I said, I have money for you. But what do you want to do? What can you do? What is on your mind? He said, let me think about it. I couldn't see him for six months or more. I said, what do you want to do? What's on your mind? He said, I will see you when I am I'm sure. That is a man stranded. That was the first time I heard from God that things don't happen to people by accident. Most things. Most things. Most people. Since you don't know people's minds, you cannot determine their events. I thought the man was stranded by the demonic attack. Ashe. <laughs> Ashe. It was a mental attack. Mentality bankruptcy, not madness. Mentality bankruptcy. And, and this is a continuous assignment. Because everything in, in our world wants to confront your mind. And make you to think that maybe you are the next victim. When you hear news of kidnap or news of terrorism or so and so on. You, there is a tendency for it to confront you with a mentality of possibility. So you wash your mind continuously. Somebody say amen. Attune your thoughts. That was number two. Number three. Align your talk. Align your talk. Align your talk. With scripture. 
align. Let's say, align your talk with light from scripture. With the light from scripture. Don't speak carelessly. Speak calculatedly. Don't speak your situation. Speak your revelation. Don't speak your frustration. Speak your conviction. Don't speak what you feel. Speak what he wills. Is God speaking to anybody? That is the law of faith. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13. But we also, we having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak. So, you speak, not what is happening, but what is written. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 20 to the law and to the testimony if they speak not according to this word this bible it is because there is no light in them <laughs> if they speak not <laughs> hello hello like they used to say in my village hello if they speak not according, if you ever see anybody talking and it is not according to this word, is it in your Bible? Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20. If they speak not according to this word, he gave, he gave us a diagnosis. It is because there is no light in them. When you see anybody speaking calamity all the time, tragedy all the time, ah, this country never be well with it. As for me, I know where I came from. The struggle as usual, survival of the fittest. Ah, in fact, me I have tried, sir. Other people can't reach here. It's because there is no light in them. For me, I am dying. I am dying. I am dying. If you don't pray for me, I die. Oh, it's because there is no light. Somebody say to me, Pray for me, or I die. I said, You want to die? If you want to die, then what is the use of my prayer? It is unto you according to your faith. You are already talking dead. I can't talk you out of it. Hallelujah. Be optimistic, be positivistic, be enthusiastic, be audacious, speak even in spite of fear. That was how David spoke. Align your talk with light. In our house, nobody can say food has finished. Soap finished. Omo finished. Whatever finished. Nothing can finish. You can, things may need replacement. <laughs> that they need replacement is not the same that they finished. You can't finish. When the lift one day, one man said, Is this lift going down? I said, Never. I will never go down in life. But in case you are going to the reception, you can join us. <laughs> are you going down? You want to go down? I don't let anybody go you down. Somebody give the Lord a shout of praise. Shout it loudest. 
I know a young man he compla who complains about everybody. Everybody. This one is not good. That one is terrible. Everybody hate me. Everybody. Guess what happened? Those who didn't know him before will hate him before they saw him. He received everything according to his faith. Align your talk with light. Finally, adjust your walk with the light. Adjust your walk to the light. Adjust your walk to the light from scripture. It's a 109 verse 105. He said, Thy word is a light lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word. Psalm 1, sorry, 119, 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. And then Isaiah chapter 2 and in verse 3, verse 5. He said, O house of Jacob, come ye and let us walk. In the light of the Lord. What is the meaning? Guide your steps with light from scripture. Take steps in line with the word. Steps in line. Guide your steps with light. What is the meaning? Do what God wants you to do. In order for you to see what he wants you to see do it faith is a walk he said we walk by faith not by sight that should be first corinthians 5 or 6 verse 6 we walk by faith not by sight faith is a walk it steps second corinthians 5 7 we walk by faith not by sight the Bible said in James chapter 2 verse 20, faith without works is dead. Someone say amen. i give you an example of align your walk or adjust your walk to the wall. If for example, I am believing God to live in divine health, I will do what scripture said will keep me in divine health. You shall serve the Lord your God. He shall bless your bread and your water. It will take sickness from you. I have to do it. Hello? Thy word is health. To, my word is health to thy flesh. And life. So I have to feed on the word. Then. A merry heart. Do it good like medicine. I cannot afford to be in depression. And be angry and annoyed all the time and expect to be held, to be held and then take look diligently lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you and many be defiled can't keep somebody in this heart on this side keep somebody in this chamber keep another one here and expect to be held so I consciously do things that guarantee my health maybe one of these days we'll do what we call a checklist for divine health I want to remain in health am I bitter? no, tick am I depressed? am I heavy? I reject heaviness and so on that is align or adjust your walk your steps to the world if I'm trusting God for supernatural supplies, I cannot sit down and say, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory, according to Philippians 419. That is complete 419. You are quoting the scripture out of context. You back up a bit to verse 15 and it will tell you that you minister to him once and again. Yes. But now you Philippians know that in the beginning of the gospel when I departed from Macedonia no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving apart from you 
you sent once and again not once and for all once and again once and again unto my necessity not because i'm looking for money from you but i desire that fruit may abound to your account and oh my god that is where you can quote 419 if you quote it alone it becomes 419 am i communicating so you know you don't you don't i cannot pray and ask god for money i do the things he asked me to do i pay my tithe and i have done that by his mercies and grace consistently this is 2019 33 years without the coercion of any pastor then my offerings and givings to the poor less privileged it, it gives me a file almost every week for needy people challenged people children out of school widows stranded continuous ministration financially church work going on and then I, I don't have any extra time to say lord i'm looking for a house or a car i don't have any extra time it happens so it happens effortlessly because i did what you said i should do adjust your work so first of all access the light then use that light to attune your mind your thought and then you align your talk and then adjust your work and do the right thing so that you are not like the man waiting for roasted chicken to fly into his mouth without doing anything it's a new day for you anyone who believes will say louder amen, amen. stand on your feet to the loudest shout of amen. amen anybody received anything today at all anybody see glory at all anybody see victory at all anybody see change coming your way at all lift your hands and your voice and give the lord the praise give him the praise give him the praise give him the honor give him the adoration father we worship you we honor you we adore you blessed be your name in jesus precious name lift your two hands people and say after me say father i come before you today to surrender myself to you thank you for access to power to the glory to the blessing access to wholeness to victory by faith thank you for your word i believe your word i receive your word it is true for me lord in the name of jesus open your mouth and speak to god and thank him speak to god and thank him speak to god honor him appreciate him adore him father we give you the praise we give you the honor we give you the adoration blessed be your name honor to your name adoration to your name you are worthy lord you are worthy lord you are worthy lord lift your hands lift your voice appreciate him honor him adore him worship him glorify him adonai rofeka mekadesh we worship you we honor you we adore you in jesus precious name